So uh, my name is Joel Day. I'm an account technology strategist with Microsoft. I, I work in the federal space. When I was asked to come and present today, um, I didn't know if it was uh, professional dress or developer dress. I am a developer, so uh, I plan for both. So while this is getting set up, um, I want to have one of my, uh, my good comfy t-shirts. So, uh, all right. All right, let's talk about DevOps. So recently, uh, Microsoft um, renamed one of our products, uh, Visual Studio Team Services, VSTS. We now renamed it to Azure DevOps. Uh, this came out just a couple weeks ago. Um, you can find, there's lots of social media stuff about it. Just, just as a heads up, this presentation I've given it multiple times uh, in under an hour, this will be the first time in 15 minutes, so I'm going to blaze. Uh, really quickly, what is DevOps? The big key port, important part of this is this, this um, union of people, process, and products. And I like that they put people and process first. Uh, as you can see in this, this wheel, this continuous delivery cycle, um, this is a lot of process. It doesn't need, necessarily need to be code. Uh, though I am going to be showing you code, I'm going to be showing you uh, the perspective from a developer, but you can think of this in terms of um, uh, your infrastructure, if you have infrastructure as code, once again, or as logistics, if you're trying to do uh, any type of mission scenario where you're trying to improve on a pipeline or automate, DevOps is a good solution. So now why should DevOps be important? These are some, some numbers I want, I, that, that um, I want to put up here. And, these are the types of numbers that I see, and I think, yeah, someone just like randomly just guessed at these numbers, because there's no way that DevOps is 2,555 times faster, uh, faster lead time for changes. Um, and I'm looking at these numbers just thinking, yeah, they, someone just made these up. Um, so I did a little research. These are actual metrics that Microsoft has been able to pull from their large amount of ingestion uh, of data, and these are the actual numbers. So when you look at DevOps and Agile versus a waterfall mentality. I mean, perfect example, um, compare Windows 10 to uh, <coughs> Vista. Um, so now what is Azure DevOps? So DevOps is usually broke up, broken up into a few categories. Mainly, we have work items that we're, we're tracking, how work is being done. We have a repository where we're going to be keeping all of our source code, our text-based documents, so we can have history where we can collaborate. Uh, we also have pipelines. You know, how do we continuously integrate our changes into an environment? How do we continuously deploy those changes into a uh, staging area, into production? How do we do all of that? Um, how do you test? One thing that's really important that you've seen here with uh, Windows 10 is how do you get feedback? That is very crucial to the DevOps process. So Microsoft took all of these different key components and built it into a single tool. Um, and that is called DevOps. And so let's jump straight into a demo. So I'm going to show you some code now. So here is a website that I built. It's super awesome. It's running locally on my, my, uh, my machine. I'm going to run it real quick so uh, you can see it. This is a, um, a, uh, an Angular application, Angular 5. Uh, it is an application that I wrote. It's a chat program for one of our customers. Uh, and really quickly, once it's built, I will be able to launch it right here so you can take a look at it. Super awesome, I promise. I spent a lot of time on it. Great, so it's actually pulling data from a, a Cosmos database up in Azure, but as you can see here, it's a local host. Well, how do I get this into the cloud? And one of the things I like to talk about when I talk about, um, about DevOps is, DevOps is kind of the, the gateway drug into the cloud, so to speak. It's, it's a great way to get yourself to where you want to be. Uh, as you saw all those performance increases, 
that includes the cloud. So here's here's a quick application. You know, you can click on let's check out Ron Weasley. Uh, he responded. You know, um, oh Bill Gates, he's responded. So here's a quick application. Now let's get into the cloud. First thing we need to do is we need to get um, our source code somewhere where we can reach it. Uh, and for that, I built. Oh, here, let me back up. Here is Azure DevOps real quick. I'll go to the home page. So I built a web page for or a, a repo f specifically for me for my projects. Um, it's Joe Day. That's my Microsoft handle. You can shoot me an email at Joe Day at Microsoft.com. Here's a list of all my projects I've been working on. Uh, and here's a list of all the other application, uh, all the other repos that I have access to in my organization. Uh, so I created this uh, project already because it takes about 30, 40 seconds to build, so I wanted to just get a, a jump on it. And the, the first thing I want to do is I want to add files to my repo. So when I come into this repo, and, and it's a Git repo, it's going to tell me, hey, there's no files. So how do you get files into it? So we're going to push from, the, from an existing repository via command line. Um, so I already set everything up locally on my, my computer. Let me jump over here. Let's stop the web page. All right. And if fingers crossed, if everything works, we are going to now commit all of this code up into Azure. All right. So I just ran git commit. Uh, which is the, the two commands that were here. If I hit refresh, we should see all those files. All right. Yay. It worked. <laughs> so now that we have files in the cloud, now we need to be able to build the pipeline to actually build and deploy that code into, um, into Azure. So that's handled via the pipeline. So as you can see, we're kind of walking down this side menu. Uh, boards, that's the work items. If I had an hour, I would love to show you that. It's some cool stuff, but um, I'm already pressed for time. So uh, I actually built this out already. Oh, nope, not that one. Let's see. So I could have a, a copy, so I could just quickly compare. So I'm going to build a new pipeline, and I'm going to add four states four actions to this pipeline. So I'm going to build it from um, our, I'll make this bigger. I'm going to take our current project, our current repo, the current branch. You can pick whichever branch you want to build it off. If you're doing a team, you can have one per team. Um, and we are going to start with a blank one, an empty pipeline. First thing we're going to do is these pipelines are going to be executed. We have to define where we're actually going to execute these. These are going to be on agents. So what's cool about Azure DevOps, you actually get hosted agents that are both uh, Windows, well actually the Windows agents, Linux agents, and Mac OS agents. So if you want to build Xcode, you can build Xcode. And you get, I think, 1,400 minutes per month free of build time. And each build takes like six minutes. So you, basically, you could be building all day long, and you'll be fine. Um, or you can download and install the agent locally on your computer. I have it running at my house. Uh, but we'll just take the hosted VS agent. Um, this looks good. Uh, everything looks good. We're going to add a task. Um, and what we had here is we were going to uh, npm. If you're not familiar with npm, npm is the node package management. This is a JavaScript application. So we're going to install. I'm going to add a second one to uh, build. And this is going to be or custom. Let me just make sure I'm doing this right. Custom run build. Yep. All right. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to um, zip up, archive everything. And we have a special path to archive. Uh, dist zip, this is the one we want. Let's see. Oh, create release package. Oh, dist, 
And then we're going to replace this. And I'm going to go until my time's up, and then we're going to stop. But I will go fast. And then we're going to publish those, those, uh, um, all the files we just created using the publish archive task. Oh, no, this one. This is what we If you make a mistake, right click, remove selected task. And I believe that's it. Should we test it out? I'm going to test it out. Let's just do it. Let's do it. Oh, first off, triggers. So we are going to trigger off of a commit. So I'm going to enable continuous integration, which means that if any time anyone commits to the master branch, we're just going to automatically kick off and queue. Um, so I'm going to hit save and queue. It's going to say, where do I want to run it from? I'm going to say, that sounds good. And then once you've done that, it actually queues up this, bu this, uh, this build. I come over here in the build list. I can see it being queued. Here it is, build number 107 or 106. Um, I've done a lot of building today. <laughs> and you can see the output. This is the actual output from the console. And you can see each of these steps as they go individually. If there's any errors, you can see where that error occurs. You can go back and fix it. All right, well, that's going. The release portion, we won't have time, so I'm just going to show it to you. So the release is the exact same process, but it has a really cool view that I want to show you. So in this view, you can see which artifacts are you triggering off of. I'm actually taking the, re the build output from that previous one, and I'm going to put it into different stages. I only have one stage, but imagine if you have a scenario where you're putting stuff into a test environment, into an integration environment, and then you have these little people icons. These are pre-approval and post-approval of deployment. You can chain all of these different stages and so that you can do the deployment and you require authorization from s individuals within your organization before it even goes into that environment. Um, clicking into, it's the exact same, the exact same interface. I, I just have a job where I'm deploying into Azure and everything's great. So that was a lot of Microsoft stuff. A lot of people use a lot of other tools. People use Chef, people use Puppet, people use GitHub. People use Jenkins. Not everyone deploys into AWS, or I mean into Azure. So people deploy into AWS. Let me go into. So Microsoft has a lot of partner applications that you can do. In fact, I have a slide real quick. Here's a quote from Satya. It's great. Um, oh, this shows all of our open source stuff. Finally integration with GitHub, and here are all of our partners. As you can see, we have Jenkins, we have Terraform, we have Puppet, Chef, Ansible. All of these are different um, partners that we have leveraged within our Azure DevOps in order to get your team deploying the way that you currently uh, want to work. Now, why would you want to do that with Azure? Well, that part where you could do the pre-approval, post-approval, you can leverage your, in, your existing Azure Active Directory for that pre-approval and post-approval. You can integrate your security model for your on-prem deployments using your in-the-cloud credentials that are being mirrored from your on-premise AD structure. And that's a huge part. You can tie all of these tools together and make them all work. Um, and I actually have an example of that that I'll kick off, and then I'll start asking or I can answer any questions, or you can just give me the cane and I'll, I'll walk off. So I did just that. I actually built... Um, I built, here is a GitHub repo for a mixed reality application that when this change, when anything in here changes, and I'm just gonna edit something real quick so it kicks off a build so you can see it. I'm just gonna add an extra space here and hit commit changes. And then if I go into my, another project, it's actually going to kick off a Jenkins build. So here is a build that's actually getting pushed out to Jenkins. As you can see, it was triggered just barely. And then the output of that
if I can get there in time, will be to my, my, uh, to my Microsoft HoloLens. So if I can get the connection, oh, that's the wrong cable. Uh, it will automatically build. I'll put this over on the table. It'll automatically build. That'll kick off. And I will actually have this application, instead of deployed to the cloud, onto an on-premise physical device that I have in my hands. So as you can see, Azure DevOps allows you to deploy on-prem, uh, in physical devices, or in the cloud. And so this is a, a great opportunity for uh, your teams to enhance your build capabilities and get into the cloud if you haven't already, or to um, make yourself 2,000 or 3,555 times faster to your, uh, your build lead time, sorry. But thank you very much. Do I, do I have any questions? Yeah, so it's all YAML, and really quick, I can show you what that looks like. Um, so each one of these build steps, uh, I was still going through and building. Oh, hey, look, it succeeded, we won. Um, you can see up here, you can see the YAML. So just like how Chef and Puppet are a, a, um, a uh, configuration-based deployment engine, uh, this is the same thing, except for there's a pretty interface that I, I really enjoy. Any other questions? What is the difference between Azure versus uh, AWS? Do you have oh, uh, so the question is, um, what, what is the difference between Azure and AWS? Um, there's a lot of differences. <laughs> um, the, big, the biggest difference uh, for me, so I, I specialize in Azure. Um, so I, I work for Microsoft. Um, so I have a lot more exposure with, with Azure. But Azure is, is built for the mission. It is built for... Uh, getting you into the end, it's built for the enterprise. It is built around uh, how Microsoft has leveraged their technologies for the last 40 years. So if you are a Microsoft shop, Azure just fits with the way that you've been doing business with Microsoft. So it is, it is the Microsoft cloud. It is exactly what you would expect from a company like Microsoft. And that is, that is uh, where Microsoft differentiates. Um, and and I, my, my experience with AWS is, is very minimal. Uh, I, I have done their deployments using uh, you know, Lambda and Elastic Beanstalk, um, and, and there are equivalent versions of those in Azure, uh, but with things like Identity as a Service, uh, tie-ins with Office 365, so our SaaS-based uh, services, you just get a very um, complete package for the enterprise. So um, the question is, when can we see all of this goodness in Azure government? Uh, I've talked with the teams that are working on that, and um, I tell them I need it yesterday, uh, and so they are working on it very, so they, they, they are very aware that this is something that a lot of people really want, um, and uh, I, I, I hope soon, <laughs> but I, I, I don't know a timeline right now. So the question is, when is this interface going to roll out to uh, TFS? So the way that they've historically done it is um, TFS will get a quarterly roll-up of all of the updates that are happening in, in Azure DevOps. Azure DevOps has a bi-weekly or weekly rollout, depending on, on feature or bug fix. Um, so they have a much more frequent update cadence. So it's usually, I would say, within the next quarter. Um, it, but, but don't quote me on that. That's, that's usually what, that's just what I've seen. Uh, if it's not this quarter, then it's going to be the next quarter. So maybe quarter plus one. That, that is very true, yes. So you can, you can have um, your agents running anywhere. I have my agent running on my PC at home. So it can, if it can connect to a computer, you can, you can, um, you can push from there. So you can leverage this to do your build pipeline. Uh, but where I've seen people really excited is they want to get into the Git repos. They want to be able to host their source code. They want to get into the work items. And they want to do it in a, in a place that's, that's government. Um, and so that's where the customer is really excited. And that's where they, what they want. Um, and so that's, that's the feedback that I give back to my teams is, uh, hey, we need this now. Right, yeah, you can host uh, TFS on-prem. You can also host uh, 
GitHub enterprise, and it will interface just with this, uh, just as seamless. So, cool. Anything else? Well, it's been a pleasure talking with you guys. Thank you very much.